Hey guys, Mark the Guitar Guy here. I was just jamming out using some things called octaves. So what, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at some advanced soloing techniques just to help you maybe break out of a, a rut if you are in a bit of a rut with your soloing. It's really simple. We're going to be doing it. I'm, I know I keep doing stuff in A minor. I've got an acoustic guitar, so it makes it simple to be in the middle of the guitar, and it's nice and simple for you to see. We're going to be using the pentatonic guitar scale, the very first shape, which is this one here. I'm just going to play it for you. You can go and see other videos to find out this guitar shape, but it's the very first pentatonic shape. Okay, in the key of A minor, and I'm playing an A minor just to get that in my head. And we're going to be using that to do this thing called octaves. So what are octaves? Octaves, if you know the word octaves, the Latin definition of it, is basically oct meaning eight. It's the, it's the first note and the eighth notes played, notes played together. So if there's the, um, when I say one and five, or one and three, or that sort of stuff, that's what that means. It's the one and the eight of a scale. So if I do the full minor scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eighth note is the same as the first note. They're both the same note and an octave apart. So simple as that. It's like going on a piano and getting middle C and going the C above that and playing them together. That's called an octave. And so we're doing that on the guitar. So I'm going to show you some shapes so you can see all of the, basically there's two shapes and you can do any octave on the guitar. It's really, really simple. So we're going to start with the very first note of the scale, which is on the fifth fret. My first finger is playing that on the top string, on the sixth string. Now the octave for that is two strings below it and two string two frets above it. So just think of the two and two, you'll be fine. So we go two strings below it, which is the D string or the fourth string. Okay, and then we're gonna put our, in this case, I'm using my third finger, but I actually prefer to use my little finger for octaves. You can do either either, there's no rule on that. I just find it easier to, to play octaves with my little finger and my first finger doing that. Now the way I'm doing that is like a bar chord position. I've got my thumb really low, so that we can get those two notes nice and simply. If I have my hand up higher, my fingers tend to come down quite directionally like towards the guitar, but we're gonna mute all the other strings. So we need them to be, fingers to be very flat, almost lying down on the guitar, thumb below, and then we just put the pressure on the tip of the first finger and then the little finger. And the rest of the notes are gonna be muted, okay? So the notes for that, I've got my fifth fret, and my little finger's playing the seventh fret on the fourth string, okay? I didn't explain that before, but there it is there, it's the seventh fret, seventh fret on the fourth string, okay? And when I, the idea of doing that is to actually play all the strings on when I'm strumming it, so that all the strings are strummed, but only those two notes stand out. The rest of the notes are muted by my left hand, either my first finger's touching those strings, not pushing down like a bar chord, but just touching them, which is very subtle, and uh, all my other fingers touching it, okay? So the way to do it is to try and get them, those other notes muted. And that's basically how we would play the first note of that scale. And then we have an octave. So that's an octave. So let's go through the scale shape now using octave shapes, okay? So that shape continues. The, the first note there is on the fifth fret, then I go to the eighth fret, this next note. Now normally if I had, in the scale shape, my little finger would play that note in the scale. But we're doing octaves, so we need to be able to use both fingers. So therefore my first finger is gonna go up to the eighth fret and play that octave there which is in this case is a C, so there's two C notes. So we've got, okay. So if you're having trouble, by the way, doing getting all the notes to, to mute when you're doing it, say you're getting, a, you're getting some other strings ringing, you can actually play two strings at once. So a pick and your finger or, or two fingers playing the octaves that way. As long as you get those notes together. Then you just keep going through the scale shape. So we've got, we've done that, those first two notes on the top string. The next two notes are gonna be the fifth and seventh fret. So it's, we just simply move exactly the same shape down so that in this case we've got the fifth fret and we've got the seventh fret. So the fifth fret is on the uh, fifth string and the seventh fret's on the third string. That gives us our octave and we just go through the scale. So the top two strings keep the same shape, okay? Keep that same distance between the, the, the fingers. Now, the change is on the next string down. So we're going to be on the D string, which is the fourth string, but instead of being two frets apart, we're going to have to stretch to be three frets apart. So the notes for that are going to be the fifth fret and the eighth fret. Still skipping a string, so we go down two strings, but we go across three frets for this one. That gives us our octave, okay? And then we do the same thing. We just do, the, do those two notes and we move up two frets and play those two notes. Four. So it becomes octaves. And the bottom string is exactly the same shape as that again. So we drop down to the bottom two, the string on the very bottom, so it's the 5th fret and the 8th fret, and we 
go through that shape as well. We're just moving up two frets. Nice and simple. So I'll go through it again. First note, second note, third note. That's using this, the closest shape between two frets. Then we go spread it out. There's our scale. So if we're already doing soloing, we already know how to do some cool little ideas with soloing, we can use that as part of our soloing. We can just be going. Like doing some funky stuff or whatever, and then you can just add in that kind of cool octave idea. Some stuff, uh, cool stuff going on in there. So what, the way to do that and make it sound real funky, I've got a right hand technique which is tick tocking like crazy, doing that, and then I'm picking notes out. Okay, I'm, I'm tick tocking like crazy. And the other thing you can do is you can't do hammer ons, pull offs, or bends because we're playing two notes at once. You can't hammer on. To somehow you can only slide. All we've got as a tool to do with with the octaves is sliding. So we can we can slide up to a note or slide down with the bottom string. But there's some fun things you can do with that because we've got two notes. It sounds really intentional. So you can actually play mistakes with an octave, and it sounds cool because because it's two notes doing it, it sounds more sure of itself, if you know what I mean. So you can actually get away with doing some stuff that wouldn't quite work normally, but because there's two notes there, you sort of get away with it because they sound like, well, yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Um, so two notes can do that. So sliding is going to help a lot with that. And it's going to take a while to get to that stage where the tick tocking and all the muting of the strings get, and you get the right feel for that. But it's really worth getting good at because there's some cool stuff you can do it with the, the octave ideas. That sort of funky sort of, you know, celebrate good times, come on, that sort of stuff. And they've got that sort of guitar playing where you hit that sort of, uh. That's all it is. It's just using like, um, probably not the right key, but that. You hear that cool little octave idea or that, where's the high one? That's just octaves. It's just two of the same notes. Quite a cool thing you can do with that. Also, you can bring out the blue note. If you know the blue note of the scale. There it is there. So, so you can hear that. The little blue note using the octaves and the blue note. So the combining of the ideas makes things really cool. So that's what we're going to do today on the octave idea. So use that with the pentatonic scale shape. Doesn't matter what scale shape you use, it's the same concept. Top two strings are going to be this, going to be that uh, distance between the, the, the fingers, and the bottom two strings are going to be that distance between them. So there's only really four that you have to worry about. Hopefully that's explained a lot for you, if you budding shredders out there. If you really like my style of teaching, do go check out jamrama.com and all my other videos on Mark the Guitar Guy. This is Mark Guitar Guy signing off, and hopefully see you again for another awesome lesson on doing some funky solo stuff. See you later.